Welcome to World Cinema Reviews. This is Frank DeVant, and we're going to talk about Godzilla today. And um, this film, it was so cool, man, that I just had to talk about it. You know, once again, I, I tried to talk about, you know, uh, mostly foreign films, but once in a while, some films just come out, and it's been more and more that this new movies especially this summer that that have prompted me to talk about it and to just give you my humble opinion and, and see what's going on well let's talk about Godzilla today man um, Godzilla you know it, it, it's a long it comes from a long series of Toho films from Japan and uh, mostly involves this guy in a rubber suit pretending to be monsters and fighting other monsters and I mean it sounds kind of silly but you know this is actually a franchise Godzilla has uh, become famous throughout the world uh, you know from Latin America to the United States to Europe uh, you know, to other Asian countries you know, not just Japan all over the world Godzilla is really famous he's been uh, he made a, an earlier uh, movie with Matthew Broderick that suck so bad and it was nothing like a Godzilla movie should be and before we start talking about this movie and, and, and the whole plot and, and what it does let me just tell you that this is one if we were to judge Godzilla movies in the same playing field as just a regular a regular movie how we're gonna grade it and stuff it will, it will come out poorly. Usually the acting's not very good, the special effects are kind of cheesy, you know, it, throughout, it, it's just... But it's a movie about giant monsters fighting each other. Uh, things blow up, buildings get destroyed, bridges get destroyed. You see, you know, that's what it is. It's fun, it's popcorn, it's cheesy. It's supposed to be that way. Uh, you know, there's all of us who are fanboys of so many other things such as Star Trek uh, you know we we ignore the over-the-top dialogue we ignore the uh, um, you know we ignore the overacting or or, or cheesiness of the whole thing uh, because we like that sci-fi you know talk we like that you know ridiculous weird plots we like that stuff because that's what draws us in it's nostalgic it's awesome that's what um, Godzilla was to me and is to me still and this film doesn't disappoint uh, we can't grade it as a regular film we gotta give it a special Godzilla rating and that's what we're gonna do but before we start telling you you know that this is the best awesome thing since sliced bread and unfortunately it's not uh, this film does have several uh, several bad things you know but however Overall, I think it's a very good Godzilla film, and I, I urge you guys to see it. But let's talk about the film itself. Um, let's talk about who's acting in it, and we got Aaron Taylor Johnson as Lieutenant Fort Brody. We got C.J. Adams as, as Young Fort. Ken Watanabe as Doctor Ichiro. Let me see Serizawa. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Brian Cranston as Joe Brody, uh, which is Ford's father, and other actors, but Brian Cranston is, is basically the best actor in the movie. Uh, I thought it was it's supposed to be Ken Watanabe, certainly, but he's not used as much like it, he should be using. So, what's the plot of this movie? And, and oh yeah, and it's, um, I believe this being directed by Gareth Edwards. And, um, Let's talk about what this film is about and the whole plot and, and the whole bunch. Well, let, let's just start with, this starts right back in the 1950s where there's some um, gigantic uh, detonations of nuclear bombs that actually historically happen in uh, some islands in the, in the Pacific. And, but they're explaining to you the narrator and uh, and through the film stock footage of, of the nuclear explosion what an opening huh 
it starts with a nuclear explosion, an actual nuclear explosion. Uh, and that's, they were trying to kill uh, Godzilla. Uh, that was the, the first attempt. They discover, uh, you know, this gigantic dinosaur from eons ago. And even though they, they, they try, you know, to use this, this uh, nuclear detonations to kill the monsters, and they tried to cover it up, they weren't successful. Now, um, the movie centers around um, uh, this couple in Japan uh, with a young son, and um, the scientist, uh, which is uh, once again played by uh, uh, by Brian Cranston, uh, you know he he and his you know, he and his wife work in the nuclear power plant, and uh, uh, something happens, supposedly a meltdown or, or some kind of accident due to an earthquake. And uh, you know, you know, not we're not really going to spoil. There's not much to spoil anyhow here, but basically, it's, it's, it's monster related. Uh, we don't know if it's Godzilla yet or not, um, and. Uh, basically, at the same time, um, Ken Watanabe is discovering a couple of dinosaur eggs. Um, one of them, he, he goes to, I believe it's the Philippines, I want to say, that he goes there and, and, and studies it, and, uh, and we don't know if, if that's whatever's attacking is whatever it hatched from the egg, the nuclear power plant. But everybody, you know, is lied to and says a meltdown. But you know, it turns out it could be monster related. So in a, in actually a very good story beginning, uh, you know, the the scientist goes there and and um, tries to Brian Cranston tries to you know. Uh, Stop the Melvin and also save his wife, who also works at the plant. And, and in a small spoiler, he can't save his wife. And it's a very heartbreaking, tough, tough, good, good, meaty uh, beginning. Um, you know, he loses his wife, and and then they cut away to years later, after you know his son and the scientists have been separated already. The son has become a soldier, but the scientist is still obsessed about finding out what really happened at the meltdown. And uh, you know he slowly discovered that it 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 wasn't you know an accident. It wasn't a random earthquake. You know it's it's basically this giant monster. And um, basically this giant monster uh, is kept under wraps. And the plot continues as as we expected. He gets out of control and um, goes. Crazy, and they can't keep him under wraps anymore. They try to kill him, but he escapes by using some really, really cool electromagnetic shock things and shuts down every machine in sight. And they can't keep it under wraps, and then he escapes, and it's pretty cool. And um, you know, it's a, your, your typical monster movie. Um, you know, we'll finish the plot with Godzilla awakening. Godzilla is sort of this legendary hunter that restores balance in nature. So he his job, Godzilla's job, or, or reason to be, or instinct if you if you wish, is to hunt down this monster or monsters, because there were two eggs, like I said, and uh, you know that's that's how the plot goes. You know, Godzilla awakens to you know to take care of what the humans can't do is shut down the monsters. Uh, so in typical Godzilla awesome fashion, the humans try to stop the monsters to no avail, because only Godzilla is such a badass that he can do it, he can stop it, he's such a cool guy. Yeah, giant lizard gonna set down some rules. So definitely really awesome, man. You look, I, I wanna, I wanna tell you what works in this film. What works in this film is the design of Godzilla. Super awesome, much better than the Matthew Broderick movie. Uh, the plot initially, actually, the whole plot is better than, than than before because we get a lot of Ken Watanabe scientists type of you know talk. 
that we always love. You know, it's always all sci-fi and all these things, uh, theories of how they're going to stop Godzilla, how they're going to stop the other monsters, what they're going to do, and and we like that stuff. You know, if you're geeky like me, you're crazy about watching movies, you you just get to like this stuff. Um, and uh, now the 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 payoff is awesome, man. The fighting at the end it's pretty cool and we get to see Godzilla kick some butt man kick some lizards butt or whatever dinosaur whatever you call those and uh, so we get a good start we get cool monsters we get a lot of destruction and awesome special effects you know the one the, it takes some of that takes place in San Francisco who's dear dear to me being from the Bay Area living there for 25 years uh, that's awesome that's I, I will never drive over that bridge again thinking Godzilla is going to come back. <laughs> it's so awesome. And um, I like I like that, you know, and I like the destruction of San Francisco City. I like it. Also, that it's kind of a twist. Uh, you know, poor Tokyo. It's about time they start destroying Tokyo. You know, Tokyo just needed a rest for so many, you know, and actual reasons, actually, sensitivity of some recent tragedies that have been going on. In, in Tokyo as well. I think no one has ever measured that. Now, what doesn't work? Uh, you know, after something happens to our main character scientist, I can't spoil it. Uh, the movie goes downhill. The his son, when he grows up and becomes a soldier, that's a really terrible acting job. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't want to insult him as an actor. Maybe it's, it's the writing, but you know, the whole it, it doesn't work. He tries to defend his family and, and go fight Godzilla and go fight the other monsters. That doesn't work. The other thing I don't like is the monster Godzilla's enemies design. Uh, they're, you know, the, they're very generic. They look like other movies that have already happened. They're not very original. If you look at the original Godzilla films from Mecha Godzilla to Destroya uh, to uh, Motra. You know, the hella cool designs, man. Japanese just got it right. You know, so it, it, it's, you know, bad monster design when the, not with Godzilla, Godzilla's fantastic. But the other enemies are not good. Um, I, you know, I will say that. And the lackluster acting, you know, in the second half, yeah. And the other bad thing I will say. It's, it's unfortunate that Godzilla doesn't get more screen time. Um, you know, uh, actually, he's there. I, I don't think he appears very much for the first 30 to 40 minutes. I think at all. Uh, so if you're expecting to see Godzilla right off the bat, good thing though, there's a very good build up to him. So, uh, so I, I can tell you that. So should you watch Godzilla? Yes, you should. If you're a fan, it's a must. Because this is an actual Godzilla movie. It, yes, it's over the top. Yes, it's silly. Yes, it's dumb. Come on, it's Godzilla, man. But it's good. It's his back. I wish this spawns other sequels. You really got to see Godzilla. Uh, now, the casual fan, I think there's enough here, you know. If, if you don't mind the hokey acting and the, you know, unexplainable crap that goes on sometimes, uh, that's cool. You know, you, you will get into the actual fighting of the monsters at the end. I think there's enough for here for the casual fan. Uh, so uh, so overall, to sum it all up, man, Godzilla, it's a cool flick. I, you know, it's it's totally worth to go to a mo good movie theater with great picture and awesome sound. Um, can't wait to own the Blu-ray. You know, put a good stereo system with a... With a nice, uh, you know, LED TV, you know, you got some good potential here. So, so this is not only going to be good for the movie theaters or IMAX, or IMAX awesome, uh, but you know, if you got a, a very good TV or if, if even this would be a great cost just to buy a TV, man. So, well, God bless you, man. Got several more videos planned for you, but I just wanted to do Godzilla fresh up. Uh, I may also do the X Men when I get to see them. Uh, be blessed, take care, have fun, watch Godzilla, God, or like they say, Godzilla. Bye-bye. Sayonara.